guys, welcome back to Pickman TV. So today we are in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We're here for our Elite Mastermind group meeting and it's gonna be so dope. There are a lot of powerful bosses and powerful people here. I can't wait to show you guys what's going on. So let's go get into it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm in momentum and somebody will ask me a question. I'm like, because I'm in momentum and you can't get back. That's the, and that's what we have. Notifications go off. Social media. You, you just go post. And you post it. And then you see something pop up. You're like, oh. And then 30, 30 minutes later, you still scroll. You go, oh, this is a gem. Boom. Save that. This is a, oh, did you check that? Boom. And now you have lost momentum. So you're not helping your 70% at all. Put more effort into that one area. Kendall, how is that going to help my overall score? As you build momentum, you start to, this score increases, right? This will start to increase, but then it carries over into every other. Because it's not, it's not about the area, it's about the effort. And it's not just about the effort in one area, it's your effort. So those things that aren't at the top three, your effort level might not be there, and it's okay. This is just about self-awareness. You're not gonna get successful unless you become self-aware. I remember when I wanted to run track, both of my parents laughed at me and they made me wear like some old tennis shoes and was like, if you can stay on the track team for one month, we'll buy you track shoes. So it was always kind of that thing. I didn't excel in it. And so I gravitated to what I was good at. And so listening to you today, I realized how all three of those areas are interconnected. Like how I can go even further if I were able to build relationships, if I were able to concentrate on my health. You know, the, the headaches would go away. I wouldn't be so exhausted sometimes and things of that nature. And so it's important for me to kind of figure out a way to incorporate all three because they are interconnected. So 10 p.m. just so that we can hit this $10,000 a month because if we miss a client, we ain't, we're not replacing our income. You're making it based off of if you do it, you, you, you're putting the responsibility on yourself. Meaning that if I don't go out and train somebody, we don't eat. You, a system needs to be put in place so that the system runs. So regardless of if you're here or not, you still eat. Like you could be here and having a trainer doing group classes for you for the people who are 99 a month because they ain't, they ain't ready for you. But the bigger yeah. picture, I guess, is like before leaving corporate America, when anybody was training, it was more of the real estate building net up. But when I walk away from corporate America, it'd be more real estate than training. Yeah. That's why I'm not taking more corporate uh, uh, clients on and on the elite end. I train at different gyms, so bringing everybody together, it add on another expense to bring out the gym. See, real estate takes you long to do for what you're trying to do. And this is one thing I'm learning. We all think, we all got a perception of how long it takes to do it. I was just telling my brother this is uh, I was talking to him, I've been doing real estate for six years. Six years in the game. They've been doing it for a year now, right? And I'm having a conversation with them. They're like, okay, we can get a call on the phone. They can make X amount of calls and we're going to get five deals a month. I'm like, mm, don't worry about that. You're thinking that it works like this. And you're thinking that if I do this, this happens. But the reality of the situation is that you have any data to back it up. You, you cannot, no, no, when I say data, I mean like, okay, I was building up the real estate so I can leave my job. You have data on to make the now, I don't know how long you've been doing real estate, but I just found out you're doing real estate so, on that. So, hold on. Before you can go there, mm -hmm. okay. you just said the goal was what? To leave for America. Period. Leave. Period. When you said forget real estate. Real, in your mind, you have to, real estate does not exist. If you said the goal is to leave corporate America, what do I need to do? What resource? What business? How am I going to generate revenue to bring that in? And you already have systems and you have something in place. So you need to you I got you. you need to use that and build that to equal out that income to even put yourself in a position to talk about walking away. Real estate is in the background. Real estate that's four five years out, out two years from a profit standpoint down the road. Let me think about it. Go ahead. Do some reverse engineers get more exposure. Here's a great way to look at what he just said: attract the tax. Mm. Oh, okay. That's the section of the set. <laughs> I'm sexy. I'm sexy. <laughs> I need to get out of my own way. I need to figure out how to get out of my own way. Um, and 
and commitment, what can I commit to? I can commit to figuring out um, a routine, like a, a daily routine, and then commit to doing that for the next 30 days. Break down that daily routine. Um, so for instance, if I work during the day, then the routine would look like making sure I'm getting up and journaling, doing my affirmations on a daily basis, make sure I'm prioritizing my um, side work that I'm doing, um, so that's foundation stuff, my personal brand stuff, making sure I carve out time to read or listen to, listen to something, but on a consistent basis. Yes, yeah, so some days I'll be on like a winning streak where I'm like, okay, I'll get up, I have time to do this, time to do that, and then I think when I get overwhelmed or like I feel like anxiety, I just don't do it at all. So it's just trying to figure out how to maneuver. So, so what is what works? What keeps you not overwhelmed? Like is it structuring your day? Is it knowing like all right, I can add sixty percent and that's my max? Like how do you how do you how do you know where your cap is? I think I just feel it. Like I feel my cap. So what's so probably point? being more self aware oh, as okay. to like so what to, to not because I think when you feel it, it's too late. Too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm not, I mean, you don't necessarily have to have it, yeah. but finding a way to get it. So for me, when I get exhausted, there's a level of like, yo, I'm tired. Yeah. And I know I probably have three more years after that, and then when my entire body feels not sleepy, but like I'm exhausted, so I need to take a nap. Maybe not overdoing my to-do list. So I'll have like a bunch of stuff that I need to get done, and I'll think that I need to do it all at one time, or like all mm -hmm. in one day, or like all in yeah. a certain amount of time. So not overdoing my to-do list. Overcommitting. Yeah, overcommitting and, and under, under. And get rid of the, and language is key. Stop saying the to-do list. Yeah. I've heard some people say success list. I, yeah. I'm big on the priority list. Yeah, but like what? Or prioritizing my priorities better. You need to write that one down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we won't. <laughs> so people are having issues with time management, like putting a time limit. So if it is, like, you put too many things on a list, then you're saying, like, what are the top five things I need to get done today? You can write 10, but you're only committed to five a day. Gotcha. And so kind of limiting yourself, like, yo, I might have 25 things on a list or 10 or 12 or whatever, but I at least have to get five things done every single day, and those are kind of the top things. <laughs>